have at the moment is really crucial. Well, let's take a closer look at what evidence is required to file war crimes charges. Bill Wiley is executive director of the Commission for International Justice and Accountability. He spent the last 25 years investigating war crimes, is a former international criminal court investigator. Uh, Bill, give us your take on what is required in uh, cities such as Bucha to establish there that war crimes were committed. Well, the first thing to note is the review of the or examination of the bodies, unlike what your viewers are used to seeing on television, is, is a relatively cursory matter. Uh, broadly speaking, one simply needs to determine effectively that they were shot when and obviously by whom. Uh, the, the real focus is on, on, on the Russians uh, as the perpetrators, but initially their structures, what units were in that town at the time that the people were killed. This is, this is obviously the key and who commanded those units. Looking at uh, what we've seen on our screens and, and hearing the various stories you've heard, uh, what do you think is the likelihood of there being success in uh, establishing, first of all, war crimes have been committed and, and people being brought to justice? Well, a case like this is fairly straightforward, in fact. Uh, it's, it's situated around a relatively small uh, town or a small area uh, north of Kiev. And um, it's uh, relatively small units involved. And keep in mind that the Ukrainians are capturing plenty of prisoners from the Russian side. And, and I think ultimately it shouldn't be a, a, a big problem for the Ukrainians to, to identify who's responsible for these offenses and to prosecute, if they wish, prosecute ultimately one or two of them or conversely send them to The Hague. But what about independent verification? It's not uh, f for just the Ukrainians to do this, is there? We need international mm -hmm. uh, independent verification of all these things that have taken place? Well, that's ideal. The Ukrainians have a, a great deal of capacity. It's a properly functioning state that remains intact despite the war. And, and you know, it's important to divorce, let's say, the political rhetoric of, of Mr. Zelensky. And then I don't mean that in a critical sense from the investigative skill set of the Ukrainians. But yes, the Ukrainians have asked and will welcome international assistance with these investigations. And, and they're, they're going to receive it. There's no question about that. But that it would be a stitch up, I, I, I wouldn't expect that. Uh, you were involved in gathering evidence of war crimes committed in Syria, also in mm -hmm. uh, other key conflicts, Rwanda, etc. What mm -hmm. lessons have you learned from, from what you've done and experienced for those who are now trying to do the same in Ukraine? Well, the key is, is uh, first, attention to detail, like with any criminal investigation. Um, the second is, is to pick and choose your investigative moments, because the, the, the breadth and depth of the criminality in Ukraine is not dissimilar to what we've seen in Syria and what we saw in the past in Rwanda. Um, so you can't investigate everything and you can't prosecute everyone. This is very important. International criminal justice is ultimately highly symbolic. Uh, those are the two main lessons I would suggest. Bill Wiley, it's been really good to talk to you. Thank you uh, for sharing your expertise on 